letting go and letting God do it. Anybody ever heard that before? Let go and let God do it? Huh? Well, I, 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 that's a very common thing and very important uh, step in this philosophy because before you can bring anything into your life, you have to make room for it and let it go. So I want to talk about different aspects of it. I love the theme this month, release. And of course, each one of the 12 powers of man represents one of the 12 faculties within the individual that Jesus talked about when he built, talked about upon this rock, I will build my church. Of course, he didn't build any. So what was he talking about? The church was the physical body and uh, each of the 12 disciples represent one of the qualities. And so the disciple this month is Thaddeus, which, who represents the faculty of elimination. And now I got to say something about the affirmation for the month. Whatever I release will bless me. Now, what we do in Unity and CSL is we use affirmative prayer. So we do not, and it's always in the now, so we do not want to use that word will because that insinuates it's not now. and We never want it to be now. We always want it to be coming later. So let's change that and say, whatever I release blesses me. And I'm going to add my favorite that I use all the time here, and I invite you to use that. I now experience perfect circulation, assimilation, and elimination in all of my bodily functions, all of my physical affairs, all of my mental affairs, and all of my emotional affairs. Try that one on for size and see what happens to you. You got to know that I've been doing this for 43 years. And two years ago, or uh, in uh, three years ago, I had one of the most major releases I've ever had. And you know, you think that as you go along in this, you get better at it, which is true. And what comes with that is peace, prosperity, fulfillment, and happiness. Not bad things. However, there always is something else. I hate to say it, but there is. And you know, I was just going along, minding my own business this week, as usual, and then the Spirit talked about me. I've been wondering why I have this certain type of behavior with my lovely lady, Anne, and I wonder why, why am I like that? Has anybody ever wondered why you were like it and why you do that? And I was going, you know, I've been asking that for a while. And holy, don't ask if you don't want to get it. Okay? Because there I was minding my own business and, and I had this vision come into effect of my mom and my dad interacting and my dad talking to my mom. And then I had this other vision of me uh, talking to Anna come in and I'm going, uh-oh. I guess I got my answer. Now I know what I need to do about it, okay? And it's good. You'll always get your answer, but then you got to do something about it. So the, universe, uh, the Un Unity Bible Dictionary uh, says this about the elimination in man. He says, it is necessary that the eliminative faculty be quickened in one and the right balance between receiving and giving, laying hold, and letting go be established. A lot in that, eh? The giving and the receiving. But the other part we don't talk much about is laying hold of, which is saving some of it, and uh, letting it go when you need to after you've used it, you see. And they go on to say, love, tenderness, and fearlessness seem to be the dominating characteristics back of proper elimination for mind and body. Fear, hate, revenge, and the like cause resistance and tension in the consciousness and the organism, which is us, the body, thus shutting off elimination, while love puts away fear and is of a softening, releasing, freeing, and balancing nature. Wow, eh? I like that. 
So I want to start out by talking about the first thing there in the title. Let's talk about letting go. Ann Landers spoke some great words I like. Some people believe that holding on and hanging in there are signs of great strength. However, there are times when it takes much more strength to know when to let go and then to do it. Wow. So what do we want to talk about this letting go of? What do we got to let go of? Well, there's, it's not just one thing. There's a few things that go into the letting go in my experience. One is tough. Letting go of toxic people and toxic activities in one's life. Try that one on for size. But you don't understand, he's my son. Or, 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 it's my daughter, or my niece, or my nephew, or my cousin. Well, if it's my good friend for many years. If they're toxic, you don't serve your them or yourself by staying in relationship. You've got to let them go and welcome them back if they choose to step beyond toxicity. So far in my experience, it hasn't happened. And I'm sure I was on the other end of that list for a lot of people about being toxic to them in their eyes at one time. Oh, I know I was, okay? So we've all been there one way or the other. Another idea here, these are just ideas for you to mull about. No, no, no attachment to any outcomes. Because when you get attached to outcomes, you are setting yourself up for all kinds of ugly feelings. And, and, and if you've got children or grandchildren, you've got a bunch of grandchildren like I do, you, you know you can't do that. <laughs> you can't get attached. I said appointments, things change. Okay, well, next. It's always on to the next thing, you know. It just, it, if, if you get attached to it, it holds you to that idea. If you release attachment outcomes, then uh, you never know what's going to happen. And it's always good and it creates a place for good, healthy spiritual activity that is not crowded by, well, they don't know how much they hurt me by doing that. No attachment to the how-tos. Well, I'd like to do it, but I don't know how to. Well, guess what? I never done anything I knew how to. I'm closing off hiking season because a week on Thursday, uh, Christmas shopping in Kensington on the 18th from 5 to 8 opens, and Santa's going to be working the streets. And Santa didn't get his big contract this year because it's not going because of Noel. But I'm working the Winter Club, the Glencoe Club in Kensington, and the love work in the streets. So it's not about what I don't have, it's about what I do have. I took a real heavy hit in the pocketbook, and for the amount of kids I could see in families, by having that canceled. Did I go, oh, gee, I'm not going to be able to do this or that? Release all of that. It don't matter. Get excited. I am excited. Because any time there is a vacancy in your life, you can choose to fill it with something delightful. Or if you got courage, then you can leave it open and know that that vacancy will be filled by your consciousness. And I'm to the stage in the game where I'm fairly confident about that. And I know if it isn't filled with something I don't like, it's because i got to do some more work upstairs and inside. Greatest thing in the world, I remember <laughs> one of the ladies was a practitioner in my center in Red Deer and her husband working in this job 15 years and he went to work one day and they pink slipped him. And she called me and she said, oh, I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know what. And he's so devastated. What do I tell him? Well, I'm going to tell you what I told her. I said, tell him congratulations. Well, you never heard dead silence on the other end of the line. And I explained to him and her that opportunity, and she got going right away with filling it with opportunity. Not only did he get another job doing what he wanted to do, it was better pay, 
more uh, control over what he was able to do and what he wanted to do, and he just loved it, and he stayed there and worked until he retired. People don't look at that when that change is brought about you as a good thing. People lose it. But it's a good thing if you make it so. Always look for the gift and rise like the phoenix from the ashes. Letting go and getting in the flow. Anybody been in the flow? I love talking about the flow. Because a lot of people don't use that in a proactive manner. I always want people to check up to see which flow you're in. Both the river and the sewer flow. Have a look at that one when you're in the flow. Just see where you're at. So that's about all is letting go. It's not just one thing. There's a lot of things that we can let go of. A lot of different areas. It's a lot of things. In fact, letting go is like water coming from a hose in your house. There's not just one thing to take into consideration. First, you got to turn it on. And however you turn your tap on determines the volume that's going to come out of what already is there. And you see, like, that's us turning on the tap to the spiritual side of things and turning it up so the flow can come. However, does that mean it's going to come out of the hose? Not necessarily so. The hose can have a kink. And so... No matter how much we turn it on, if we got a kink in the hose, it isn't going to work. So we have to learn to turn it on and deal with the kinks. And by the way, if you turn it on, you may say, well, I know what the kinks are. You don't have to worry about that. Just turn it on. The kinks will be there. Isn't that how you do it with the hose? You don't worry. Oh, is there any kinks in the hose here? No. You turn it on. If it doesn't come out, you know there's a kink or a blockage. You don't have to worry about that. It'll be brought to your attention. But you do got to go through that process. The second part, letting God do it. Will Smith, the actor, said, throughout life people will make you mad, disrespect you, and treat you bad. Let God deal with the things they do because hate in your heart will consume you too. Don't have to worry about that. I come to that many years ago about that very important part because, you know, you can't escape the law of cause and effect. And as Oprah Winfrey said, karma knows your address. <laughs> and I can attest to you from personal experience that that does work. I'm not just talking about the positive things. I'm talking about the negative because I've had some karma visit me. Whew. Clay Aiken, a, a very famous songwriter, said, I think, and I think that when I finally decided to let go and let God and allow that to happen, I became a lot more successful than I could have done if I planned it all by myself. So what does it mean, let God, let God do it? We're not talking about some being old man in particular with a gray beard that's going out there and he's going to do it to us or not because he has nothing else to do than running the universe than to take direct control over screwing up our lives because we know what we want and he doesn't. <laughs> okay, let's get away from all of that idea. When we talk about letting go and let God do it, the simplest way you can look at it is in the spring, we're going to get our soil, everything ready. We're going to nurture it, get it ready. And then we're going to select the seeds, and then we're going to plant them. And, of course, we're going to nurture it, feed it, and do everything we need to do along the way. But does anybody here participate in the growing process? No, we don't do the growing. That's God's job, right? When we start interfering with God's job, that creates problems like going up there, digging it up your seeds every day. Oh, they're not growing yet, but they're going to come. How many people would actually do that? You would think if you've seen somebody doing that, that you've got to get them some help. 
Well, folks, guess what? If you're going around digging around when it's doing, planting your seeds and working on what you want, wondering how it's going to happen and all that, you need some help. And that's what we're talking about here. So let God do what God needs to do. Our job is to clear the obstructions from our channel. Dr. Ernest Holmes said, in all things that we do, all affirmative prayer, I always say, there are no obstructions to the operation of truth in me, through me, or by means of me. I added that, but there are no obstructions to the operation of truth. So what does that mean? We've got this channel, and our job is to keep it clear. So what clogs that up and makes a mess and stops the creative flow? It stops God from being able to do it through us by means of us. Well, here they are, the big four. Worry, doubt, fear, and negativity. So anytime we entertain those, we're making a declaration that we don't believe that God is for us, working through us by means of us. We're setting up a block, a restriction, a limitation, a coating, and pretty soon the channel will close and we'll be saying, I'm doing everything right. I'm saying all the right things, but it's not working. That's because the channel isn't open. So what we need to do is to watch and monitor and minimize the impact of maintaining that on us. And then, next, remove these words from your vocabulary. If only. But. You ever go through this great conversation and they say, but, but negates everything that you said before it. Well, you know, this stuff is really good and I've had a lot of success, but. Okay. And then someday, <laughs> someday I'll whatever. Anybody use someday? And is some anybody been using someday for a project for a long time? Yeah, so we have to get off our butts and do something so we don't live in someday, right? And remember, this is my favorite little ditty uh, with ifs and buts because it's getting near Christmas. If ifs and buts were candies and nuts, I guess it'd be time for Christmas. Okay, so that's how you got to do is let God do it. You know... Uh, I, I, uh, Anna and I became a professional Santa and Mrs. Claus. This is our seventh season. And I had no clue on how to do it at all. You know, I've been to Santa. I did amateur stuff. But to really, really get it and do it good so that people really got it. And so it's simple little things like not doing it for the children. People say, oh, you must love doing it for the children. We don't do it for the children. We do it for the family, for the children, the parents, and the grandparents. We do it for the family, you see. So it's all inclusive. And this is our consciousness that we take there. And now we're into our Santa meditation season. And what we do is we do a meditation every day, and we do it knowing that we are personifying the highest and best of Santa and Mrs. Claus from the collective consciousness in the minds and the hearts of the children, parents, and grandparents. So people say, well, how do you prepare to go do this other than all the other stuff? That's the preparation. We do it, we declare it, we accept it, we trust it, and know it is so, and we just establish that in consciousness like we need to do with things, and then step into the experience and just be that. You don't need to know what to say or what to do. You just develop that idea in consciousness Believe it, accept it unconditionally, and step into it. And it is amazing. Like I said, three contracts this year, Kensington, Winter Club, and uh, Glencoe Club, not too bad of a contract. Interesting, eh? 
plus some of the other stuff that we'll do for not for profit special things for kids and you know that can't do it and all of that that's all part of it but we did not know how to do that and all the things and all the connections no clue but we started and declared it and stepped into the experience and we got guided led and directed each step of the way to what it was that we needed to do to be what it was that we said we wanted to be last idea is cleaning your house John Morton, the Lord Chancellor of England and Archbishop of Canterbury in the 1400s, said manifesting the blessings is not really anything that is complicated or even difficult. 1486, folks, did you hear this? Could have been 2016. Clear out what is not serving you or no longer actively being utilized. Oh, that's the closets and all of that. Give and share joyously, receive graciously, make amends, adorn yourself first with inner beauty so that the outer beauty may benefit from your best intentions and contribute more than you take. Make each place you find better than you found it and be an abundant source of good tidings to and from God. In short, let go and let God. So we need to clean our house of our negative beliefs about ourselves, in particular, our negative self-talk, and then we can work on our garage, basement, closets, and anything else that we got in our life. And I hated putting this out. I really had a reaction to this because I really need to listen to it, so bear with me. I have to listen to that letting go of stuff. I got stuff that I've been packed in my box that I've been carrying around since before I met Anna. It seems like forever. Okay, so we've got to learn to clean our house, okay? So let go, letting God do it, and clean your house. Those are the three qualities that we can bring to it, and it's everything that we need to do inside ourselves, and then take ourselves out there and just be who we are. Because you know what? Bottom line is, who we are right here, right now, is good enough. And we have all the potential we need right now to experience peace, prosperity, fulfillment, and happiness. That is my declaration for myself and for each and every one here. And I know it to be so, and so it is. Whee! <laughs> Thank you.